Hi everybody, thanks for watching the next video in our video series for the OpenMV Cam AE3 and N6 Kickstarter. And so in this video we're going to talk about the OpenMV Cam AE3 now and show off some person detection on it and actually extremely high speed face detection using the fumble algorithm. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the OpenMV Cam AE3 for a second. So we've got the OpenMV Cam AE3 here. Uh, let me just make sure you can see it in the field of view in this picture. Um, and so that little chip in the center, that is the Aleph Ensemble E3. It's six by seven millimeters. And this little chip get, contains two processor cores with vector instructions, 13 megabytes of RAM on chip. It even has another five megabytes of something called MRAM, which is like a flash that we store the application code on. And then it's got 32 megabytes of off-chip flash for your FAT file system and that ROM file system we were mentioning where we can execute models and place off of. Uh, and then again, this chip also has two neural network accelerators giving you 250 giga ops of performance. All of that in this tiny package and at max power, that little chip by itself just draws about 30 milliampers. Insane. We also have um, a my, well, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chipset on board that's right next to the processor. So you've got internet connectivity, the ability to do BLE. There's an option for a UFL connector if you so choose. Got a little push button here for a user button on the side. USB high speed and then a QWIC connection so you can, you know, plug into SparkFun or Adafruit's line of sensors, even Grove's uh, connectors and such. Uh, this little switch here is um, for recovery. Uh, hopefully you'll never have to use that, but we do uh, always ensure that for any OpenMV cam we build, there's a way to fully unbrick the thing if you manage to brick it in all the ways and shapes and forms. And then for sensors on board, we have the same global shutter color camera that the OpenMV cam N6 has. Uh, a smaller lens here, this is an M8 lens, but the benefit though is that this guy, um, it's still, you can still change the focus if you so choose, and it's also removable, so you can put different M8 lenses in there. And then we actually have a microphone port here and a RGB LED, and then here's the time of flight sensor right next to the camera, and this does miss the camera so you don't, you know, you don't see it in that field of view. And then again, on the very back, accelerometer and gyroscope perfectly centered in the back of the camera module. And another feature um, that uh, is super important is actually it comes with a board-to-board -board connector on the back, and so this breaks out the JTAG pins and about 10 IO pins actually, so that you can build backpacks and that has, and those can then have access to SPY, I squared C, UART, um, timer, you know, PWM, uh, everything you need, uh, can also. And so that gives you all the features you need to actually uh, have this guy connect um, to anything and be integrated. So super awesome, love this little guy. Anyway, let's check out his performance, which is next level. All right, we've got the OpenMVCAM A3 running now. So let's dig in and see how this guy feels. All right, so this is OpenMV Cam A3. We got streaming through OpenMV IDE also. Uh, this little guy is a little bit slower than the OpenMV Cam N6, but it's still quite performant and quite powerful. Uh, and so right now we're just streaming video to the computer and we can see that runs smoothly and looks good. Um, now the image quality of the camera is not yet at the best it could be. Uh, we haven't put that much time and effort into tuning the ISP just yet, so we still got a lot of work to do there. But things look good right now, just out of the box by default. Um, so we have stuff working uh, at minimum. Uh, anyway, so uh, what I wanted to show off here, we already went through examples of how OpenMV IDE looks and how it kind of feels. And so in this example, I kind of wanted to show off um, what it looks like to run a model in the OpenMV Cam AE3. Uh, and so we can take that same YOLO script, same exact YOLO script, and we can run that on the OpenMV Cam AE3. And you may have noticed here, OpenMV IDE supports multiple tabs, so you can switch between scripts. Um, just a little tidbit here, uh, we actually have the full back end of something called QT Creator, which is a professional IDE that OpenMV IDE is built on. And so we can actually, if we wanted to, show split images and windows with different code panels. Uh, we don't do that on purpose because we're trying to actually show off, um, it would be really confusing to figure out which script you want to run when you're basically clicking the stop button and run button. Uh, so we only have one open at a time for that reason. Uh, anyway, so in this script, uh, this is the same exact script that was running on the OpenMV Cam N6. So remember, that's a totally different CPU architecture, uh, totally different processor, and, and it has the same Cortex-M55 CPU, but otherwise, everything you can imagine is different in that chip. And so thanks to the brilliance of MicroPython, 
and the way OpenMV IDE sets, well, the way we set things up with OpenMV, uh, you can run the same script, same exact script, and that will run on both systems without any changes. This really allows you to move between the higher end system and the OpenMV Chem, uh, the lower power system like the OpenMV Chem A3 seamlessly so you can choose which system you want for your purposes. And so, again, this is uh, object detection running on the OpenMV Chem A3. As you can see, it actually keeps up with the N6. Uh, depending on which model you're using, you're going to see different performance metrics on the OpenMV Chem A3 or N6. So for some models, the N6 is going to blow the OpenMV Chem A3 away at 3x the performance. And some models, not, not so much, uh, like this particular Yoda model. It really depends on the operators used on that particular model and how the performance changes. But either way, both of these CPUs are really nice and able to do and run AI models at you know, actually usable frame rates. Uh, a thing to keep in mind here is that for uh, our original, our current OpenMV cams that we're selling in our store, like the H7 and RT1062, uh, those OpenMV cams, for example, get about 0.6 frames a second running the same model. So you're going from 0.6 FPS up to 20 to, uh, actually, if we disable the frame buffer, and let's just see what it looks like when we don't load the processor. Uh, yeah, 29, 30 frames a second, basically. So, really big deal. I mean, that that is, uh, what is that off the top of my head? Uh, somewhere close to 50 times the performance speed up. But then also, remember that the OpenMV Chem A3 is drawing only 60 milliamp years right now running this model, and that is about 3x performance left, 3x power draw less than the OpenMV Chem N6. Sorry, um, 3x power loss less than the previous OpenMV Chems. And so, again, that is, you know, you're, you're beyond 100x the performance increase uh, between, you know, from old models to this new model. And so this, this is truly an amazing system. Um, anyway, but we've got some other cool stuff that OpenMV Chem A3 can do. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show off, actually, that we didn't show before is the ability to go really, really fast. Um, so these are large models, like the yellow model. Um, we can actually do things on smaller models, and so let's see what it looks like if we shrink that model size down. All right, so now we have the FOMO model here running. Uh, FOMO is a model from Edge Impulse. It works through image segmentation, and so what that means is it takes in an input image and it outputs a segmentation mask. This is a class score uh, per pixel. Um, for each um, class, so uh, multiple images that are output, and then those segmentation scores map to the centroid of the object you're looking for. And so for this example, uh, this model is really outputting uh, one image uh, of um, basically pixels that represent the confidence that it thinks there's a face at a certain point. Um, and so we have that all baked in on the OpenMV Cam, uh, this uh, model, and, and it will allow you to do face detection. Uh, the FOMO models are very tiny, so compared to YOLO, uh, this model is in the kilobytes in size because it was meant to run on microcontrollers, but now with the MPU aboard, uh, you can really get some insane performance out of these things because, again, it's a tiny model meant to run fast. Um, and so for the FOMO model, uh, we're actually able to achieve 120 frames a second, which is incredible. So, how does this work? Uh, first, we're doing things just like we were doing before with the YOLO model. So you're able to load that model into RAM, uh, and it's sitting on the ROM file system again. Uh, and then, uh, sorry, when it's not loaded into RAM, but the model is on the ROM file system, and then we uh, allocate the model using this uh, model class, which then allocates the tensors and runs it, and etc. And then once we do that, we can then call our predict function as we did before, and that'll take the image, uh, a list of tensors in, which is just one in this case, uh, image, and that'll then run the model, and then we have a FOMO post-processing callback that'll run on board so that we can process that data, and that way you don't have to work with the default ND array output, but instead have uh, a list of objects, which are the, the bounding boxes that will, the, the centroids basically that you want of the objects. And then from there, we do a little bit of Python magic to iterate through the list, and we can print all the objects and see where they are. And so, boom, that little example script that comes baked into the ID, ready to go for you, gets you all the way up and running for having an object detector. And then you can plug this into I squared C, UART, um, Ethernet, sorry, well, not for Ethernet for the OpenMV Cam A3, but you can plug it into Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, for example, and send that data to something else. Um, anyway, so, 120 frames a second, by the way, is not actually the maximum speed you can go at. 
uh, the 83 is capable of more. And so if we set that to 240, uh, the camera is now going to generate frames at 240, and then we're going to try to process them as fast as we can. And so even though the camera is sending us 240 FPS, we can see the processor is able to keep up at around 175 frames a second for dealing with those images and running ML inference on them, and so returning results. That's insane. It's incredible, though, what the OpenMV Cam A3 is able to do and with our new uh, Global Shutter PixArt uh, sensor. Um, anyway, you can also go to higher reses here, so you don't have to work at, um, you know, uh, QVGA. You can work at VGA, for example, and so right now we've set the camera to be VGA. Uh, we're going back to 120 frames a second to slow it down a little bit so we don't get all that flickering, and then we're cropping it to 240 by 240 uh, to get that center view. So, still, an incredible system, incredible performance. Thank you for watching, um, and check out the next video in this series.